love it. Tap in, nigga, log in. Smoke a lot, radio, we going all in. Uh, tap in, bitch, log in. Smoke a lot, radio, we going all in. Tap in, hold log in. Smoke a lot, radio, we going all in. Uh, the squad making sure we all win. Smoke a lot, radio, we going all in. Zilla. I'm the host with the most smoke, yeah. rolling up the most dope. Yeah. Kato got the oh most dope. God. Simone Taylor keep it sexy for the grown folks. I'm OG, tone low, bouncing on them gold spokes. Smoke. Smoke. smoke, we the number one podcast. Some other shows, all trash, Amber Rose, all ass. Smoke. Broadcasting live from the coast. Sick committee with the jokes. Come and get your ass roasted. Kato, Kato. Kato for you, nigga. Review my foul. How to show up on the net. You other niggas is clowns. Pulling bust a niggas' cars, pulling whole skirts up. I'm the king of one liners. Y'all got what the fuck? Since we stepped up on the scene, we got the haters' attention. Only bosses on the set, you other niggas is mentioned. For your back for interviews, nigga, boss up your views. Nigga, fuck your crew. Nigga, who is you? Uh, coming through with the block report. The real spill, cause niggas know I got report. Uh, about to give you what you're waiting for. Simone, Kato, and Yuck, we about to take the floor. And we back like we never left. Other radio shows, they getting put up on the show. Every time we step out, you know we fresh to death. Here to take our brain so today, ain't nothing left. You bitch! <laughs> Hey, who is these niggas? Y'all talking about? They gonna get on smoke a lot with they 400 follower, 17 motherfucking view having ass. Fuck these niggas crazy than a mouth. These niggas crazy than a mouth. Fuck. <laughs> hey, hey, Samoa, what she got with? Oh my mama. Hey, tap in, nigga, log in. Smoke a lot, radio, we going all in. Hey, it's your host with the most cool auto smoke. Yuck, mouth with the beautiful. Simone Taylor in the building. The illest nigga in Nebraska, B. Kato on my mama. And we are Smoke A Lot Radio, man. Powered by Digital Soulbox and Pod TV. You know what I mean? Go get the download. I mean, go download the, uh, the app right now download on all your phones. Your Androids, your Samsons, your, uh, uh, your iPhones. Your Obama phone. You know the motherfuckers old iPhones now. Y'all got the technology. Your Metro, all that, man. Yeah. Go down. Download that in the, in the apps, man, and um, yeah, man, check us out, man. You know what I mean? All of the whole umbrella, man. Seven the whole digital, trap phones. Um, yeah, the whole thing. Gangster Chronicles, everybody, man. Go, you know, tap in and rock with us, man. Independent, man. You know, um, and we're sponsored by. Introducing Rapper Chris, Chris Kratom. 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 I'm, about, I'm ready to go, baby, like the racehorses around this set of Sponsored by Rapper Kush Kratom, man. Give them their vitamins, man. All right. Introducing <laughs> Rapper Kush Kratom, the lead brand tearing up the Kratom extract competition with its high-quality food-grade formula. The Kratom game is popping off and see why for yourself today. It's been medicinally used for hundreds of years in Southeast Asia. Kratom interacts with the dopamine receptors in your brain to help release the stress and pain without interrupting your day-to-day -day activities. Active Kratom users swell by this natural powerhouse to help them thrive through life without having rely on painkillers or other stimulants. Rapper Kush Kratom takes pride in offering you top quality Kratom, whether you need it for pain relief or a general mood boost. Rapper Kush Kratom, the brand that makes you say, yeah! yeah! yeah da, da. You some of this shit, man? Hey, man, to get the Rapper Kush Kratom, it comes in all types of different versions, man. Gummies, the, uh, the two out, the five out energy shot, the powder, the pills, and so on and the so powder, on. The powder, the pills. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, go to rapperkushkratom.com, man, and tell them Smoke A Lot Radio sent you, man. We coming with them codes, you know what I mean, to where y'all can get discounts soon. And, yeah, man, let's get down to the show, man. How was y'all weekend, man? Ladies first. Oh, yeah, Simone. Nah, 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 nah. Come on now. How was your weekend, Kato <laughs> Fonia, you man? You know, you be having the hottest weekends like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Next, you yuck. All weekend was, was crazy. We, we, <laughs> I was... I did Fresno last week. <laughs> right? How did Fresno go? Like How did Fresno hell? go? Fresno was lit. You know what I mean? Shout out to Fresno, man. It was uh, me, Nump. Nump. Uh, Nump. He came? Not Numb. Nump. Oh, Nump. Who the fuck? Oh, I thought it was Nummy Who Nump. Who's that? Who's that? Yeah, Nump is lit in the Bay Area, man. You know what I mean? Okay. So, uh, yeah, he lit. 
So it was us, no, but it was supposed to be Spice One, man. Was oh, was my nigga Spiggity. Spice the show. <laughs> then they had that bag oh, right. Wow. That's the only time he don't show up when that bag don't come. No, nigga, the bag was right. He just didn't show up. Oh, oh, oh you didn't pull up. <laughs> oh, wow, that's not pull good. Pull up like shitty pampers, my nigga. No, pull up, my nigga. Shout out to my nigga Spice. <laughs> that's crazy. But, yeah, we, we was in and out, though, my nigga. It ain't no time to be hanging out, man. Right, so me, right. me and Fly, we did our thing, yeah. killed it. You know what I mean? Told that bitch down to 10 nothings and got little. Like we left that motherfucker that night, didn't spend a night. We went right back to LA. Did, that did night. it like Sugar Free be doing it? That nigga gets the fuck on right we after got that on song. Is right dead. after, nigga, like literally, and got back to LA by I'm like not twelve. <laughs> we was back home by twelve, nigga, literally. So in and out like a robbery, my nigga. Um, yeah, man, you know shows, shows and shows and more dogs. It's a busy yeah. week. Yeah. Well, you know, up. we had the '70s theme party here at oh, the yeah, Point Academy. Too. That too. That was really nice, you know. Everybody Another had show. the afros. Oh Another yeah, you show. had your home yeah. Yeah. trotter on. Yeah, yeah, yeah man, I see. It was it. lit. Had a good time. Yeah, I was. I was a uh, Yuck Iverson senior. Yeah. <laughs> Yuck <laughs> Iverson senior. Yeah, I, yeah, I was. I, I was a question. He had the basketball and everything. He came in pocket, bro. I was a question, my nigga. Oh my mama. <laughs> my son. The is question. An <laughs> I, was the a <laughs> I was an apostrophe. <laughs> man. My son is the answer, nigga. So yeah, man. That seventy party was groovy though. Good vibes yeah, it and was. shit here it at the Corn Academy, man. Shout yeah. out the boy Macca. Yeah. You know what I mean? Shout out uh, Go Mac. Shout out Laylaw. Shout mm -hmm. out the whole Corn Academy. It was a beautiful fucking event, man. Very grown up. Very sexy. Yes. Yeah. A lot of afros, yes. a lot of bell bottoms, a lot of yes. bell bottoms, a lot of you know dashikis, a lot of, yeah, a lot of, a lot of black, black panthers. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen that panthers. too. Yeah. I think the whole goddamn black panthers from Chicago, UEP, all of them there, and Oakland was all in the yeah, building at one time. They was yeah. thick. That was nice. It was a panther party. <laughs> it was a panther party. But hey, man, give it up to the nigga that was singing though. He was grooving. Oh, you weren't there. The nigga that was singing it. was white. It was, a, it was a band. He had the whole full band, dude. Nah, he was lit. There wasn't no karaoke, neither. I didn't hear him. Bro was singing all this shit. Really? What's the shit? Uh, leader, leader, don't open. Fix, fix, fix your mic. Oh, the mic fucked up? I'm leader, don't open. He was singing all that oh, shit. Oh, that nigga was fucking with the Bruno Mean Yeah, arse. boy, he okay. sang that shit to a T. Like, damn, they're just as good as them. I'm like, okay, hold up, swell up. You feel me? But besides that, um, it's been a lot of danger going on out there, man. A lot of shootouts and shit, you know what I mean? People been getting shot, killed, yeah. robbed. All types of danger out there for you rap niggas, man. So rapping is, is a motherfucking dangerous sport right it's now. the new Be gang careful bang. out there. That's why me and Fly, we got little. As soon as we performed, we left. We could have just stayed there and chilled at the party, but you chilling and you might make a motherfucker feel some type of way could turn to a beef, a beef turn to smoke, smoke turn to real niggas yeah. pulling out the A lot the of smoke. people just on other shit right now, man. Yeah. Get your bag and get nigga, the Nigga, them PPP loans ran out. Nigga, niggas is, is laying shit down. mad before that shit. You can be mad broke, mad balling. Niggas just mad. Oh, well, you know, uh, Justin L.A. Boy had a, a pool party at the W. Yeah, the niggas got socked in the pool. It was crazy. I seen that footage. I seen the nigga got yeah. socked in the pool. Wow. Got, they had all kind of angles, too. They punched yeah. the They punched the shit out of that nigga in the pool, man. <laughs> it was kind of crazy. He was out here with bye byes all types yeah, of yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, that shit was real bye -bye. litty. Bah! Yeah, I'm going to just keep my chicken shit ass at the house and yeah, tell me that real got me <laughs> fucked up. I don't, man, my thing is this, man. If you feel like you got to bring a gun to the party, I'm not going. Period. And that's been like the situations with these like young type of rappers, man. You gonna have to bring a strap. You think it's a skinny pants dance, nigga, and, and it's really a gun dance, nigga. A hammer dance. You know what I mean? Hmm. You ain't got your hammy, nigga. It's got the Draco. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a hammer. They, they fitting hammers in them skinny pants, my now, nigga. Now, I agree with bringing it to protect yourself, but if you're bringing it to start something, then that's. Bringing it I in? I agree with that. Yes, I'll go not even fuck so around, man. You can't be caught slipping with you. Well, you just go to well, exclusive baby, shit where it just ain't the, the baby. Shit. Was, they was that protect. was random. He to go to fly or show up at the party shit. Well, the baby they was protecting themselves at a restaurant. Now his homie is locked up for attempted murder. You know what I mean? At the uh, state state prime twelve or something well, in I'm Miami. Not, I can't lie. When I was that age, I was doing. So that he shit. got he got like arrested age, too, no. but <laughs> his homie, you know what I mean, got arrested for attempted murder. He popped two niggas, paralyzed one and shot another one in the in the leg. So, but um, he was defending. Oh, yeah, of course. He could beat it in the court. Definitely yeah. self-defense. And then Florida got that stand your ground law. Yep, sure does. So he definitely going to beat that. But I'm just letting you know that, yeah, man, it's ugly. Even for the big rappers, you know. So be careful out there, my nigga. Stay dangerous. Yeah, this shit happened at restaurants, all type of shit. 
Motherfucker defaced uh, Nipsey's all week. Hero. Yes. How y'all feel about that, man? Um, I know that's real hood politics. I know, like, you know what I mean? That, that's real beef. But I'm just talking about the respect and the disrespect. How you feel about that? Well, I mean, you know, I heard it was somebody who was from, like, a rival gang. They did it. That one. Because remember, before that, it was, like, a whole nut on the right. other one on Sloss. And that was some other Mickey little shit with, like, regular paint. So right. it's all kind of, like, trolling is some whole shit. They yeah, even trolling, trolling the new, dead uh, man's paintings. The new revenue you know, is the Nobody new wasn't talking about nothing when the man was around on nothing negative and all that shit. And then, you know, if it's gang politics, gangs know when to where and how to go get whatever fuck niggas that's members of the gang. The paint shit don't do nothing for nobody. That's weak. Yeah, I feel the same. No, it is what it is. I feel the same. Um, yeah, man, I, that's real politics. I think it's still disrespectful. Did he put his name up there, the young nigga, and Even all that? Even if it's like, hood politics, know, I think it's still disrespectful. Niggas you know will take what I mean? whatever publicity, good, bad, ugly. I think it's hella disrespectful and like, you know, mm -hmm. this is what it is. But um, rest in peace, Nip, man. You know, LA, man, let's get it together. <laughs> we got to. LA, let's get it together, man. Ain't trying that shit. Speaking of LA, man, Kato, what, what your Lake is doing, man? <laughs> man, them niggas just yeah. down on bended knees. <laughs> just swallow my pride. Still sorry. Them niggas just doing them some Wanye right now, my nigga. Broken hearted like a brandy single. Bro, what the fuck is up, man? Hey, man, roster changes. You know, we got the bubble cubic zirconia ring. Going with that shit, cause right now we looking like redhead stepchildren getting the shit slapped out of us. Mm. Kuzma, get the fuck on. Let's deal him somewhere while he got a little worth. Package them young niggas up. Get us a real star over here to help that young man. And tender ass AD always dinged up, nigga. Glass Joe. He needs some Kush Kratom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you need some Kush Kratom. Help the dopamine receptors in your brain to help relieve the stress and pain. Wow. Mother of a gang of fuckers. <laughs> that nigga Glass Joe, bro. He, you know, he, you know how much cac diet cactus cool I lost on these niggas? <laughs> <laughs> Cases. Cases of diet cactus cool I done lost. <laughs> Motherfucker. You know how I many Lakers jerseys I got, nigga, that I can't wear no more? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> you know how I many Adidas Costco sweaters I got every sweaters fucking color lost? Lakers jersey ever, nigga. I can't wear them motherfuckers, baby. <laughs> now, now, no. Nah, you got to put them all up. Oh, uh, they going to be throwing eggs at me, but <laughs> be... <laughs> They gonna be hippie with the butter Joe, yeah, Fire man. Fire like, Frank Go Vogel, fuck him. Yeah, man, Put get him the Jason fuck out Kidd of here, Put Jason Kidd at man. the helm yeah. so they can play an up-to-date style of ball. Cause every motherfucking body want to shoot a three, but they can't shoot no threes on the Lakers like that. Brian can't shoot threes like that. That's what I'm saying, man. Got them big old like, niggas out there at the three-point line. Gasol and AD, everybody want to shoot threes. Go, Go down there and box, bust them niggas upside their motherfucking head. Probably be going five for 20 from the three. <laughs> like, God damn. Step nigga. back. <laughs> nigga, man, go to the hole, my nigga, and dominate. Yeah, nigga, you are not going to put some motherfucking Kush Kratom on your groin and come back next year with your shit together. Shameless plug. Hey, man, it is what it is. Like I said, man, niggas traded away the whole championship squad. That's where they fucked up. Like the Warriors, when they kept getting the rings, they kept the whole squad. Period. They didn't trade all the niggas away. They kept their squad, my nigga. Period. They probably trade some bench niggas away to get uh, Yeah, the Warriors yeah. had a front office. Right. LeBron is the motherfucking front office wherever he play at. You know what I'm so saying? So you think so that LeBron hates no conflict talent? of interest. Sometimes he just might not, he drops the ball. You think Your he niggas got no is in that position for a reason over there in the front office. Lakers been winning championships before that man came over Bro, here. Bro, so you trust bought a retired nigga that was retired out to be the center, and you got rid of that, that, Yeah, that Gasol Howard. shit fucked me up. You got and, and <laughs> Gasol and the other nigga. The, no, the German motherfucker. No, the nigga. Schroeder. The, no, the last nigga, the center. Montrez? No. They don't give him no run, man. Not Montrez, the other center. <laughs> oh, uh, the Dudley nigga? A big nigga, man, that they just bought in, that just retired. The Gasol. big who? Gasol. Not Gasol, the other big nigga with the beard and the afro. McGee? Oh, nigga, I ain't named him. What, what's the brother name about? that played for the Lakers, man? Oh, Lakers Gasol. Not Gasol, nigga, the other big nigga. The black nigga, he's black, he's, but he's, he's light-skinned with the beard. He's black, but he's light-skinned. Nigga, because you, you keep naming German motherfuckers <laughs> in, in, 
and French motherfuckers and shit. I'm like, what's my nigga what the name? Fuck we had, man. He must anyway, have been sorry. They bought it. Yeah, he ain't they don't do shit but rebound. <laughs> we can't, nigga. That's why we don't remember his motherfucker. Tonight. He ain't to be remembered. Right. He ain't doing too much tonight. Yeah, he ain't hey, doing too much man. tonight. Drummond, Get rid of drum, Drummond. Oh, Drummond, the penguin nigga. Drummond, nigga. Oh, the, yeah, that nigga. He don't get no run. Vogel don't know how to coach. Don't Drummond, know how to do it. Drummond, he a big the, the center, right? He just he can't blame nothing on him though. But he, he just was got retired. There. No, he wasn't. No, no. The day I sat him down because he cost so much money when he was in Detroit. So mm. they didn't want to play him no more so they can get something for his ass. Okay, got he it. Was he was the shit, though. Yeah. He was the shit. He was a, a 2010, 2010. How, did, how 10, the fuck 11? you going to forget him if he was the shit? <laughs> we ain't been there long we enough. We only, only had the nigga about a month, two months. <laughs> the motherfucker. Yeah, we were doing Pictionary with this nigga. Yeah, we name. only had that motherfucker two, three months. <laughs> nah, not him. Nah, not him. <laughs> The black nigga. Yeah, you talking about the, the, the furry face nigga. I, didn't I say he had a beard and an afro? Why I get that nigga and you traded everybody else this away? Is man. Coaching, man. It's coaching, man. It's the roster. Man. We got a sorry ass guard. Our guard sucks. Schroeder ain't shit. Take your German ass back to Atlanta. I don't know. On man. my mama. I'm pissed off. I lost all them cactus coolers. Simone, let's turn it up, man. I got a question for you. Yes. Do you feel that all the IG supermodels have uh, transformed into the new way porn stars? Uh, of course, with OnlyFans and all that stuff. Like all the women who turned their nose up on it, they now busting it open for $5.23. Busting that shit open for the yeah, wet team. Wet five. Nip I mean, that. real porn stars, you like know. real celebrity porn stars right. get big bread. At a point in time, they were, yes. Uh, now, it's not the way that it used to be. Now, uh, porn stars are creating their own content and building their own websites. Like only fans. <laughs> no, they got their own websites. Right, and websites. That yeah, too. That too. Um, you know. They don't need the machine no more. They can just do it on their phone. The machine, crazy. Only fans is, you know, I mean, if you know what you're doing, you can make money. Like, you know. If you a solidified bad bitch, like, don't think that you just, like, little average everyday stripper on fucking that in the neighborhood. You'd be surprised though. I'm yeah, sorry. Like you that. ain't making them hundreds and hundreds of thousands a month. Now you gonna run it up. Like it's a couple niggas. I know a couple pimp niggas that's running it up, but they making about Man, three, four thousand a month. You this know bitches on there getting money bills. just showing but their they goddamn feet. Right, but they ain't doing <laughs> the hundreds of thousands that these big bitches is doing a month. But let me tell they you not. something about the taxes with that shit. Cause uh -oh. They sent, oh, oh, it's the pussy tax. Roll up. They got the pussy tax. <laughs> they will send you a tax form in the mail yeah, for OnlyFans. Yeah, the government tax and coochie too, ladies. And you better turn it Sign in. Sign your W-2 on the coochie. You better make the payments if, you, if you're making that type of money. Uh, make sure you keep up with your paperwork. A lot of people don't know that. And it, it sometimes it doesn't really look good for Turbo your Turbo tax You're not making pussy. that much money. But Filing paperwork. I mean, it is what it is. How did you use it? Did you, you stretch it? You 10000 a year, you don't got to file taxes. So it's some bitches that ain't making 10000 a year on that goddamn OnlyFans. <laughs> You got a nigga right. grandma on that motherfucker still trying to only fans like a MILF. <laughs> ain't making no money. The shit people like, man. This making a Be soft product. I mean, month. ain't making 10,000 a year. It's 12 <laughs> months in a year. It's 12 How? Months. How is that possible? I'm just saying, man. That's the that's that's rule to where you don't got to file taxes. If you make less than 10,000, you ain't got to file taxes. Pimp on, ladies. Yeah, that's what I was saying. And I think it's some bitches out there that make less than 10,000 on OnlyFans. Sorry about that. How cool. On to the next. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody hates Simone. Sorry about that. Simone Excuse ain't on OnlyFans. Me? I'm talking about like a superstar. <laughs> what you mean? Like you were a superstar, like far as like, <clears throat> you know what I mean? Back in the day, far as your profession. You right, so you right. So if you were a superstar that had that profession back in the day, you got a fan base so you could run it up. You know what I mean? But I actually do have an OnlyFans though. Oh shit! <laughs> Got the only? I just don't promote it because I don't have to promote it. The oh, people, the people so who know it's there, they know it's fan base. there. So. Then I say y'all got your only fan. Y'all uh, you got know. only fans already. They uh, are. They are. It's on a need to know basis. They, got they know. Only fans already. Secret society. You know, y'all. Looking mean, where to find y'all at? I just Period. put on put one video and I just keep getting money. I don't got to do what the girls got to do and keep putting the content. I ain't got to do that shit. So, okay, I see these insta insta thoughts. I didn't seem like some of. The ones I follow. Mm -hmm. It's the ones I'm like, God damn, she bad. I just seen them getting dogged out. On OnlyFans? No, nah, on Twitter. You know, Twitter is the OnlyFans uh, preview channel. Mm. So you go to some of these girls' IG uh, Twitter and they getting took down. 
threesomes, yeah. foursomes. Oh, because people are pre-recording. Strap-ons and Pe- people oh, yeah, are pre-recording. Like That's a little, what they're doing. Little one minute and I mean, you know the, the, the value rest. went down. That pandemic pussy had but to get But what's even points. more crazy? They, they have going. male porn stars that used to be straight performers are doing gay porn on OnlyFans. Whoa. Yes. Hold up, swallow up. Yes. Shit's getting really fucking crazy. The real porn star yes. niggas is doing gay. Yes. Brian Pumper? Brian Pumper's actually in jail, I heard. Oh, shit. Allegedly. Uh, <laughs> free to, free allegedly, to pump. Allegedly, he's in prison <laughs> right now. You said free to pump? He's been in prison for like 13 months, <laughs> allegedly. That's what I heard for shooting a girl that was underage. He shot her. Allegedly. This is, this Damn. is what I heard. Yeah, he shot. Not shot her. <laughs> Filmed her he performed with her. Yes. Oh, shot with her. Like, Supposedly the paperwork wasn't right or okay. something. I don't know. Allegedly. She didn't so. pay her pussy tax in the W2. <laughs> we was talking about earlier. Where Russell Simmons at? The <laughs> Gucci In Maui, what am I saying? Russell Simmons hitting that? <laughs> hitting what? Shameless. I said we're the hideout. He need to be at the hideout. <laughs> Russell Simmons got hideouts. <laughs> Allegedly. Alleged. Right. Yeah, alleged hideouts. <laughs> Need to be on an island somewhere, but <laughs> God damn, it can happen like that though. Just like I was saying, we were saying earlier about the Michelle Lake shit with Danny Boy. How y'all feel about these goddamn Danny Boy interviews? Because Danny Boy is he got got Michelle Lake on fire. Michelle Lake right or Mary J? No, Mary J. Mary, my bad. High moment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mary J. Got what her. is he saying? He said oh, that he was you. fucking Mary J since he was six, 15. 15? Okay. So everybody no coming at her like she had sex with a minor. I'm not going to bash Mary J. Uh, because we're not, I, we're not here know, to do that. I'm just Let's saying. Get this I'm just saying. Started. Sometimes when you relay messages, you know, jamboree. you're putting it out there. However, um, allegedly Mary was doing her thing back in the day. We don't know. We, look, I'm going to tell you this, my nigga. This is what I was saying. Mary didn't know how old the nigga was. This nigga is hanging with Suge, the Suge's son, whatever. It, he's a tall nigga for 15. He probably looked like he's like 19, 20 or something. Ooh. Nobody's at the party asking your age. Everybody's in the room. Let, like, I, everybody's in this motherfucker. Say let's something keep happened. It one you thou, ain't gonna wow. pull somebody to say, like, how old are you? Man. Really? Y'all just turned up. I almost really got skip. tricked one time. Really I almost skip. got tricked one time. Really skip. One time. I'm dead ass unless really a skip. motherfucker look like a baby. Now, if you got a Bow Wow on this motherfucker looking like Bow Wow when that he was little. That nigga is chilling with Suge Knight. It don't matter, women. You need to ask for Mary IDs, too. Who's asking for ID when they fuck? Women need to ask for Mary it. Mary want some I'm young swipe. Nah, that shit ain't never happened. When nah, have you ever Mary asked a nigga for ID? She wanted some young swipe. Listen. That ain't never happened. She was pissed about KC, saw this young Listen. nigga that could sing, too. She didn't know how old the nigga was, He could man. sing, too. Ooh. Let's Sorry get this on and start. She didn't know how old he was. She knew he wasn't 25. Definitely. Why y'all but you can't fuck a 19-year-old, a 20-year-old I mean, listen, 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 listen. She was turned up at first. She was like, motherfucker, all the turned up bitches. She wasn't always a no more pain and the beautiful motherfucker. Come on. Man, with the minutes, she was rocking with KC, goddammit. And this nigga My talking about. She like she R&B skinny out brown and niggas. That's her type. I believe she took him down like a Christmas what is What is his purpose of coming out and saying it now? He been saying why it. Why not? People just Fuck now it. Okay, well, why? Why? Wendy Williams can tell her story. He tell been it. telling this shit, but people just putting it on blast because of the uh, why whole do, thing. Why, why do you we think care? he like he is? He about turned out. Hollywood had to do a, a movie. Check this out, man. I was fucking 14. Fucking old dope fiends, nigga. That was fucking like 35, 30 and shit, you right? Said old dope fiends? Old dope fiends. Like, I gave him crack. The fuck? The strawberries. Strawberries. Right. Nigga, you want to crack them? Every the uncle took their nephew dealer? to get their first little Can slice of strawberry. Get by the strawberry. By the strawberry. Nigga, we were saying you, that earlier. Yeah, nigga, hold Cantaloupe, on, Cantaloupe, strawberry, honeydew, nigga, melon, I didn't have no strawberry. Nigga, it was my neighbor. <laughs> nigga, I lived with my grandma. Nigga, she knew I had the, them hubbards. Boy, you out there with, nigga, with peaches? And I was running my homeboy mama. Nigga, Mexican bad as fuck. Your homeboy mama. Running her. Cold in the chin. Well, cut school to runner. She just walked right next door. Y'all nigga, still I'm friends? A 14. So you ever got it like me and your mama decided it's time you do something with yourself? Man, he was a square bed. He went from the <laughs> bill, nigga. My Go grandma wake that nigga up, come out the bill. Bill. Draws all he wasn't no nigga like us. Been I give a fuck about that nigga like that. He went Take on the block with us. Out. He just lived next door to my grandma. And I was running his nigga, mama. Man. And his mama was bad. She wasn't no crackhead like niggas bad as fuck. You was 14? 14, nigga. You was a little had, Antoine Fisher ass nigga running around the streets, huh? Nah, nigga, I was selling a lot of crack. But anyway, I had <laughs> niggas, look, I had my niggas, I, we all cut school, right? I had niggas in the closet, under the motherfucking bed, everything. I said, nigga, I'm fucking the, the grown bitch. They didn't believe me. 
I bought everybody, nigga. Numb, nigga. T. Lou, another nigga. Everybody was in, in my my my, my grandma's house. Hide first everywhere. On Smoke a lot of radio. I, nigga, she walked right next door. Nigga, she was the Miss Parker of the block. Miss Parker, I was Thank running Miss Parker, nigga. She walked right next door. Niggas, yeah, they 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 watched me run the bitch. Period. Niggas in closets, under beds, everything. Soon she left. Oh my nigga, you was lying. You were lying. I was the don at school, nigga. They like so they was under the bed the while you was fucking, just listening. Yeah, in the closet. Yeah. Cold niggas. Cold nigga. This is junior high school. That's yeah, I know. a stunt. I understand. I understand. I'm a fourteen year old fucking a thirty year old. That's a stunt. Niggas wanted to see that. They thought I was lying. So nigga, come to the crib. Watch this. <laughs> Watch this, nigga. Watch your boy in motion. You feel me? Cold. Yeah, cold. man. So with that being said, back in the day, females, you know what I mean? We couldn't knock the little uh, the chicks in our junior high school. So what makes you think Mary didn't know dealers, then? If the, the bitch knew about you, what makes you think Mary dealers, didn't know? The old dope dealers was coming. So Mary up. knew. Mary knew all she that nigga was. My nigga. I think well, she if did. the bitch who fucked you knew, Imagine then how come Mary couldn't know? Because it was for crack. <laughs> it was Mary fucking Mary for crack. Mary fucking for crack? <laughs> man, that was for crack. We crack all know she's saying all this shit. She's fucking with drugs and man. Come on, y'all. That was for crack. Damn, damn Kato. Damn. You can't do the Straight queen of R&B like that, bro. It's a big boy show. Made to know her age, my nigga. Damn. Made to know his age. Everything nigga. points to what I said. All the evidence. The crack, the young shit, the knowledge. <laughs> this is a Mary crazy. knew. She wanted some young swipe. Back then, you could do that. It wasn't the camera age. But ladies, you gotta, be, that. you that gotta be careful. What niggas did when they were young? You go to the high school for 16 boys, year old. Man. That was what it was. Niggas, stop mm-hmm. lying. Wasn't nobody worried about no 18 yet. Mm-mm, In them days, crazy. them is the night. I want to give a big shout out to Marino. Niggas was fucking. Because I'm about to pop one of these bottles. Pop Marino was in the like building. You know what I mean? Y'all wonder why these fancy bottles is on the building, mate. Marino. Marino, Beverly Hills, Los Angeles. That's Vegas. from Colton. Uh-uh. Rosé Privé. Just that Rosé Privé, baby. You know what I mean? Straight up. So I'm about to pop some of that. You want some of this, sis? No, I'm Like she Mary okay. Mary. You talking about you Mary J. Mod, not Mary Mary. Motherfucker. Nigga crazy. <laughs> it's the wrong Mary. Mary knew. Hey, nigga, Mary If loving you is wrong, I don't want to be. Didn't she have a song saying some shit like that? Mary didn't know. Talk about Danny Casey. Boy. But when she was okay. mad at him, okay. they always over dude. there. Say that Daddy dude. boy was available. Who, who put the locks on? Mary J. Blige. So she fucked the locks then. Fuck it. She what? No, I'm just saying if she was fucking young, niggas. Why you, you think them? What was so special locks? about the locks? Because she put on the locks, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> she discovered them, nigga. That nigga just pulled some niggas out the head. The locks. But remember what what's her name said? <laughs> she discovered what them. was what's her name? Oh, what's her name? What? The rapping, the rapping chick from LA. Remember we interviewed her. Nick And she said knick-knack. Remember what she See? said? She did she stories. say Mary was getting trains ran on her back in the day. She we said, know that. She said it. So why that. she didn't know about Daniel Boy? So, Daniel son. Daniel son. <laughs> I mean, you know, it is what it is. I mean, women Shout like to, to experiment. Mary, no more pain. Hey, so y'all against her. You never want to fuck your teacher? Of course. Okay, Everybody then. If you ever got a chance to You're fuck your teacher. You're the point. So why are you sitting there giving this bitch all this credit then? I'm just telling you, you my nigga. But you keep bringing up bitches what? that do it. Because they do it. <laughs> they do it. Shit is crazy. They do it, bro. <laughs> Don't blame the nigga. Blame the nigga. There's a chance that she didn't know. There's a chance. There's a chance. There's a chance. There's a chance. Nigga, be there's a chance. Sure she didn't know, nigga. That, there's a chance. What no rules know. with that nigga? Unless that nigga was the ABC. She probably assigned and made her... Hey, unless he, she, unless that nigga look like another bad creation, slice. she didn't know. I got your contract right here. Get Danny Boy slice. Fuck she had crazy. to. I don't nigga. know. I don't nah, know. Man, and then they, they, Danny Boy talking all the faith shit. He said oh, faith was rocking out God. with pops since he got out of jail. True, the hell said it. No, not no. I'm Two. talking about fresh from prison. Like bought him hella Louis Vuitton, like fifty thousand dollars worth of Louis Vuitton shit. Versace That's shit. That's a cold bitch. I'm sorry. Yo, hey, when he got out of jail. So why? I'm no. Daddy, yo, listen, yo, them Danny Boy interviews is crazy, man. Go, you go get a bar that, man. We need Danny, Danny Boy up in this motherfucker, yeah, man. No, we no do. Frank no, Ocean, man. Come definitely. tell your story, Danny. We that do. boy got got boy T. <laughs> that boy got gangster T. <laughs> I believe him. Gangsta team. <laughs> Y'all over acting like it's Mary Mary, the damn gospel group. Mary was, let's get in this party. He said Puff Baby Mama. Started. Puff Daddy said he Puff. can't get laid. Puff Baby Mama. Which one? The blonde the one. one. Lisa. The one in the Biggie one. video. Lisa. 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 The one with the drink. So Lisa, Lisa, Mary, <laughs> and Misa. 
uh, Mary and uh, Faith used to come out and rock with Suge, Pac, and um, and uh, fucking Danny Boy. <laughs> so why he couldn't get a slice of MJB? This nigga here. He was slicing her ass up Yo, like cheese. He probably wasn't. Danny that Boy said he was doing this while what she was mean? with, with while she was with KC. Do you think she gave she him was fuck? down they with KC? Usher was getting took down young too. Them bitches didn't give fuck in that industry. What no rules? What if she? What if she like got I a fetish? Like you fuck. should know better. You in the motherfucker? You know that's what they was doing. It was getting. You want to get on, little nigga? Just like bitch, nigga, niggas do the bitch. I need a hook, nigga. I can get a hook, all right. Hell man, universe. Universe. All right, mm-hmm. man, don't disrespect the king of R&B. Who? The queen of R&B. <laughs> Y'all fucking marry up, man. Come on, man. I, I, give a, I give her that, man. Now, she can fuck whoever she want at death row. They grown, but I think she didn't know that, man. Mm. She didn't know. I agree with you. Who gonna tell their age, nigga? You gonna say you your age? You don't have to. You, you in the pussy. Night. You in Mary J. Blige's no pussy. Question. You you in it, nigga. You done you done work your game. In the heyday you in it. You say, hey, by the way, I'm 15. Night. You ain't got to answer no questions. You gonna say Whatever that? Whatever bitch in that motherfuckers. Shit, I wanna. I always wanted to go get it right now. That shit didn't happen, man. Period. He, she uh, didn't know how old it. that nigga was. They was at Bible study together. You gotta but be careful, shit. That's you know? a celebrity body. He got she a nice yeah. to the the body. body. The pastor, I almost anniversary. got tricked one time. This young dude, he was like 16. I didn't even know. He's See? driving a Porsche See? truck and See? iced out. I See? didn't even know. Yeah, Pulled up know. on me like, what's up? Took me out to eat to the mall. Yeah. And then I ended up seeing somebody that knows him that I knew. And they was like, what had you, you already took him down? Like, what had you, it. nigga, go to school. Had I you said, already took him down? Go to school, down? you in college? He, went to Taft. he like, nah, I go to Dorsey. I'm like, what? Whoa. Have you already took him down when you found out? No. no, but I did see his penis. You saw it. It was really large. Mm, that's crazy. Hey, man, you can't be looking at young dudes stuff I like didn't that. know that he was young. See, just like Mary J. Blige. Bingo, next subject. Yada da got Danny it. Boy did not go to Dorsey, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> You just never know. Danny Boy probably was iced out that night and had this and had some Dom P ready for him. He was walking around with Shug. Whatever you want here, you got that. Exactly. So she thinking he one of the ones. Right. Motherfucker. Anyway. She was high. So so y'all brought up a good subject matter, man. Somebody said Puff said he's the king of L.A. Oh. Wait. Puff said who's what? You said Puff said he's the king of L.A. K. That motherfucker said we got our our OG. Yes, Guess in the building, man. Yes, he did. And uh, Big Hutch been funking all day about that, man. So, Uh-oh. Hutch, what you got to say about that? Just elaborate in on that situation before we go into your interview, my brother. Well, I will tell you this. He ain't the king of L.A. Definitely not. Okay. Um, on top of that, he ain't the representative of nobody from L.A. Um, on top of that, it's very disrespectful for me and the rest of my colleagues who built L.A. Hip Hop, yes. for us, anybody to say some shit like that, mm-hmm. you know? Because I feel like the stuff that the New York cats built, the stuff that the cats built down south, I would never go and say, I'm a representative of them in that fashion where I'm running they shit, you know what I mean? And that's where he came off on it. You know, people have a problem with me saying something about it a, a little bit, because they, they, they look at status of people and everything, but dog, I've been having status since, since 90, dog. You know what I'm saying? I don't rock with the best, you know, from Easy e all the way up to Tupac, all the way up to Cats nowadays doing shit, man. You know, but one thing I have to say is being in the presence of all them dudes, from Dre to Easy to Pac, they never said they was the king of shit. Mm-hmm. So when anybody speaking on like speaking on that level, you already know they 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 out of they out of pocket anyway. Mm-hmm. The king of what? Like what is he the king of? Like to me, I don't really think he held down New York like that on some Damn. real shit back back in my era. You know, I think he was just like he was popping, but he wasn't like considered being like a real real dude from out there like that. Because when they came out our way for as what was cracking what we was doing at Ruthless and Death Row. They didn't hold a candle to nothing we was doing out here. You know, we was powerhouses. So I don't really know where he come with like, like, oh, he the king of this and he the king of that and he repping this and repping that. Like, it's bullshit to me and he on some punk shit. Yes. I'ma say it real, fam. I'm, I'm gonna say it real like that, you know, because I built LA hip hop. I'm a part of building LA hip hop and making it a global sound, you know, 
with everything I, we did at Ruthless and everything we did at Death Row. Right. So I feel like anybody putting words in their mouth like that, that's an arrogance, and they, they on some sucker shit. It's disrespectful. It's very disrespectful, man, you know. It's very, very disrespectful, y'all. And, and people got to understand the, 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 okay, the era we came up in, right? Okay, how it was hard for us to get on. Like, really, other places didn't want L.A. hip-hop or West Coast in general to even be heard on a global level. Right. So they kind of blocked us a little bit. So if I look at, if I look at what, okay, if I look at what Bad Boy was doing, Bad Boy kind of late in the game. When it comes to that era, they're kind of late. They're kind of late. They're kind of like, okay, what Ice-T built, then what Easy e built, and then what, what they were doing at Death Row. Then comes the bad boys. Then comes that, you yeah, know, then yeah. comes Rockefeller. Then comes, you know, if, but even on the East Coast, only thing was really popping back then. And here's what's fucked up, dog. Like, here's the whole fucked up thing about him. And I ain't even, I ain't even elaborate on this part. When them dudes was powerhouses, this dude was in the mail room at Uptown Records. Mm. He was running coffee for um, Andre Harrell, yep. rest in peace. Yep. You know what I mean? Mm. So for him to act like he's so ordained and everybody put him on point, that's disrespectful to the game for real. Because there's other cats that came out here like Russell Simmons had big respect for the West. He would never say that he the king of this and he represent you and, and prop himself up like that. That was my problem with it. Yeah. You propping yourself up on some shit like, okay, what does what Puffy did to say he he's representing us yeah, on the man. West Coast on any level. He ain't never met a West Coast he artist. He ain't had a West Coast artist. He ain't even collaborated with no artist that's like, okay, it's a major Damn. shit that he did. He needs. never had a he West never Coast artist. He never never did a mix so on him to even, So him to, for him to even say he anything. Lying. He wow. never had a West Coast artist. And ain't never been a bad boy West Coast artist. Where? Wow. Dre did more for Dre did more for the East Coast <coughs> for, for East Coast artists than him. Well, he he, uh, you know? exec he, he, he executive produced uh, Nipsey last album. That, that don't mean song. nothing. That's a, that's a, but see, that, that don't make listen. Clout. He was a music supervisor. Mm -hmm. Let's get that correct. Which I thought was out of pocket anyway. Right. Because he could have came to Drake. He could have came to anybody. That's how you gonna make a song. I know what L.A. supposed to sound like. When when what nigga when fuck? you know what L.A. sound like. See, we should have been in, in his ass when he said that. He not from L.A. He ain't never represented L.A. on no level. If, if, if you know, at the end of the day, he didn't even really like to fuck around like out here. Loom, Biggie yeah. did. Biggie Loom. Did. Loom wasn't from Loom the West Coast. Loom, 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 Loom was not from L.A. He from Harlem, but went to Loom Beverly Hills High. Yeah, exactly. For a minute or something, but he from but Harlem. But he from, from schoolboy or something. He from no. Harlem. But New he, York. he was out here. Harlem, New York. He from Harlem, New York. And he went to Beverly Hills High with one of the Because your boy brought Loon uh, on the dude that just passed on. Um, Black Rob. Cat? Black Rob. That's Loon. Yeah. Loon is his yeah, homeboy. They from Harlem. But Loon was out here in L.A. for a minute. But they, they from Harlem. From they from New York. A semester oh with Paris Hills he, he didn't meet, that, he didn't meet Loon in L.A. He met that nigga in Harlem. There you go. Period. Because that's Black Rob partner. Right. Well, I know. That's Mace partner. That's they all from, that was, that was, from that was, Harlem. That was, right. that was before all Black niggas from Harlem. Because he was part of Harlem world. Exactly. Yeah, so that's yeah. Mace Potter. They're all from Harlem. Yeah, so that's, that's how Mace you part of Harlem world and you from L.A.? Right. See, right. I don't see me. I did it too long. I did it too long, y'all. So I, I can't let him off the hook like that and, and you know, on that level. He want to see me, he can see me. And I'm talking about word for word, bang for bang, history for history. Because I know he wasn't that back then. So you, I know he ain't never represented nothing that we stand for out here. What's so, up, yo? I was about to say, uh, <laughs> so you feel like the, the goddamn bottles of Ciroc on the West Coast ain't shit. There ain't nothing to me. Right. You, ain't been, never, have, you never was a Ciroc boy? <laughs> I like Ciroc. I like bad boy stuff. I like the music they did. Right. But he's not the king of L.A. He's done nothing for L.A. hip-hop. Okay. He's never done nothing for L.A. hip-hop. Now, that's real. You and, gave, and, you gave and, him all his roses, but came really out here said, made movies what, what, and what's the point? You know what I mean? You fuck with bad boy music. You I fuck, fuck with bad ride. boy. But you ain't the king of L.A., nigga. There you go. Period. Facts. You don't represent us. He don't represent us. He don't, he don't, when he go other places and he letting you know that we, or whatever he said in that phrase, you don't represent us. You're not from us. Have you ain't never did right. nothing to represent us. To huh? Any of his folks reached out to you yet? Nah, not yet. They, they, I know they want to. But let's keep in mind, a lot of people say things for uh, clickbait, 
just to get things going, just to get people talking. So he could have just been using that as a derivative to basically. So say check that. this out. So what I did on my on my on my live today, I did it for clickbait then too. Shut the fuck up. How about that? How about I say oh some real shit? Mama. How about people say some real shit for clickbait? Right. That's right. what I look at when people yeah, give me that excuse. Fake shit culture. That's what I say. Shit. Since right. everybody want to do fake shit for clickbait, I'm going to say some real shit for clickbait. Shut the fuck up, Puffy. How about that? Okay, besides, <laughs> besides that, um, I, I agree that he, he's not the king of the West. But as uh, far as hip-hop, okay. do you feel he one of the hip-hop kings? I think so. Okay. And, and he made I, his bones. He made his bones for, with Bad Boy. Bad Boy made their bones. Right. I, I ain't mad at that. Bad Boy made their bones. Def Jam made their bones. Rufus made they bones. Death Row made they bones. Rap a lot made they bones. I I can't never see. I I did it too long, right. but I know what you did in that era. So I ain't gonna let you out the gate. I'm not I'm not gonna let you out the gate like that. See, everybody want to rewrite history. Everybody, mm -hmm. I, me, mm. I don't never count nobody out of the history. Right. But it seems like they always do. I was this. I was that. Yeah. And I ain't dead, homie. It's a whole bunch of dudes that don't have a voice, but I do, and I ain't dead. I ain't in prison. Mm. So I'm not going to discredit Bad Boy because I love what Bad Boy did for hip hop. Right. right. But at the same time, but at the same time do you really respect? See, it's, it's funny you say that. Yes. Now, I, was, I, I was talking. Let me land right yeah. quick on what I was okay. saying. Mm -hmm. Not to cut you off. I was saying that I think he was saying that, that I'm a king in hip hop. And then whatever, I got houses on this coast, that coast, that coast, and wherever I go. Right. I, I, you know what I mean? I'm a fixture there. You know what I mean? I could make some power moves happen. Um, he, to me, in my eyes, he, he is one of the hip-hop kings. The Jay-Z's, right. the nigga that's is. in that billion-dollar bracket, the, the Kanye's, the big is. boys. So he one of them boys. And but I, I don't, think he listen, I am too. He then I am too. Said. I created G-Funk. I helped build Ruthless. I can't say that I, I can't say that I'm that for New York, though. Right. That's the point in all of it. Mm. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? That's the point. It's not the point that he didn't do nothing and he has no value. So then Kendrick, That's the point. It, Kendrick, it's like, I can say that. See, that's the point. See, but what I would can Kendrick say that. said that he was a king of New York? I, I would guess with, with Kendrick saying it, it's more of a rap jab. You don't think this is a rap jab? I don't think so. I think he's trying to be, it's an arrogant power play. Yeah. Mm. That's what I think. Because I know the players. If I didn't know the players, I would say it's something else. Mm. See, Kendrick's a kid. No disrespect, Kendrick's a kid to what, Kendrick exists because of what we did. The, the, the NWA's above the laws, the, the, the stuff we built. He's a part of that, you know what I mean? So Kendrick is looking at it like a rap jab. Puffy's looking at it like he's regulated everything. And it's, and, and it's his point, it, it's, it's him to come out and speak for everybody like Osiris and the Warriors. Nobody appointed you as yeah. Osiris from yeah. LA. Right. So don't do that. And there's so many gang, politics, <clears throat> nobody the king of LA, my nigga. They ain't. It's a, this is this a vigilante like world. This is a vigilante like fucking world. world. This is vigilante nigga. world out here. And nobody, I don't care what the you got king pins. Don Dada. You got king pins, you got kids that you got kids and cats that ran their family and they like they, and they, they ran their shit. And they sets and they shit, but shit you're not the king of the whole they not. LA. Nah. It's, it's not. South Central, it's not. Watts, Compton. There you go. Englewood, you're not. Right. Sorry about that. Right. Not even Hollywood. Right. Sorry about that. But you know, it's a story, a story that I <laughs> tell you. Because they got gangs in Hollywood now, It's too. a story that I tell you that, I, that me and Easy was eating at, after the Grammy party at the um, Columbia Bar and Grill. And Russell Simmons came in there and he said, hey man, he said, check it out. I'm trying to sign some groups out here. And he said, it's a particular group called South Central Cartel. Shout out to South Central Cartel, right? So. He said, I just need your blessings to do it. So Easy kind of chuckled. We laughed. He wear it back and he chuckled. He said, hey, man, you can do what you want to do. It's, it's a free market out here. He said, he said, no, you the king of L.A. I got to respect that. I'm from New York. So when it comes mm. to that, that's what they gave us. Right. It's a protocol. It, it was a protocol. All right. It wasn't just any. When it comes to that part, people from other places should respect that right? because of how we labored, you know what I mean, and how we built the industry 
people should respect that young. You know what I'm saying? Right. They should, man. Like I, I, I wouldn't do it to New York. I watch, I watch um, um, Jay and Dash. I would never disrespect them. I watch how hard they work. I would never disrespect them. Even if I had differences, they had differences with Pac. They had different. I would never disrespect what they built, man. So if you, you know, got a billion dollars out this shit and you was in a puffy position, you got the number one liquor, right. you're doing your thing, you got, right. you know what I mean, your mm -hmm. artist was the hottest in the West Coast, yep. you, you're popping on the East Coast, you got shit and, and the goddamn, what, what's that shit where all the, the water was at? The Hamptons, yeah, you got Hamptons. shit in the Hamptons off the water, you got shit in Miami off Star Island and shit, okay. you got shit in, you know what I mean, you got shit everywhere, when you go there, you, 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 you the nigga, you okay. know what I mean, you got all the executives and shit, they okay. fuck with you, all the fashion designers, yeah, absolutely. all that, whoop, 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 all the, mm -hmm. all the rappers, they fuck with you, absolutely. Your, your kids is doing all types of movies and shit, absolutely, would you still say that? No, because <laughs> because in nineteen in nineteen eighty in eighteen in nineteen eighty nine and eighty in nineteen eighty nine and nineteen ninety, Easy E was that, and I was with him every day. He was all that you talking about in nineteen ninety. Right. Okay. He was a puffy in nineteen ninety. Facts. He fucked with every major record label from L.A. to New York. He could regulate anything in the city. His publishers was the biggest in Hollywood. His company was, a, was, was, was considered as the new Motown at that time. Everything, everything we plaqued in 1990 was plaqued, gold and platinum, everything on the wall, above the law, DOC, Michelle A, NWA, Easy e JJ, JJ Fad. Fad. Don't forget about Bob. Bone no, that's before, that's that's, after, I'm talking that's about 19, after, listen, after. I'm talking about 1990. I'm about before. He was the equivalent of what a Puffy is right now in 1990, and guess what he was? A real motherfucker said, look, I'm just me. I'm not the king of nothing. I just run my own shit and this is how I do it. He don't have to be like that. I'm not trying to tell him what to be or how to be, but all of that money and all that shit that people say, all this shit suit, suit people up. I've been around that shit in the beginning of my career, dog. These dudes was multi-millionaires before, they was multi-millionaires and running big ass conglomerates before it was even, before even people used the word conglomerate. Do you feel he, he said that shit because it ain't nobody to answer to? Absolutely. Mm. I absolutely feel that way. And that ain't no knock, and that ain't no knock on nothing to, to say like, you stand on this and you stand on that, but make sure you say, I don't have a problem with him saying he the king of New York, because maybe he should feel like that. You know, he, he, he made his bones in New York. He said Miami, too. But when he say Miami and L.A., I feel like you don't really... He specifically really... said... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Man. The only rap nigga, mm -hmm. rapper, as far as rap-wise, that could say they rapper-wise, the king yeah. of L.A. is Snoop Dogg. Absolutely. Period. He, he didn't had the lineage, you know what I mean, the, the superstar. And Snoop been a prince. And Snoop, and Snoop been a prince, and now he's ordained the king. He's been a prince, so he put his time in. Right. He put his time in. You know, and Snoop is, and Snoop is here. Snoop is us. Yeah, you he's, know? he's from y'all. Yeah. He's from Dre. He's from Easy. Hey, he's from I, above I, the law. The whole that's camp. right. He's from us. Yeah. So speaking of that, mm -hmm. let, enough about Puff. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Let's get into your career, man. Let's get, Let's get into how you started. Legend. <laughs> I want to know the, the, the beginning, man, because I know your family. I, right. I know the personal story, but right. let the fans know and, and the new viewers, the people that don't know the history, okay. man. Let them know the whole. Um, well, you know, I represent the notorious ass above the law, man. You know. <laughs> The, the, but let them know, like, like how, yeah. how, like, when you first, like, give us an insight, my nigga. Like, what age was you when you first picked up that pen? Um, you know what I mean? Like, well, I yeah, started, yeah. you know, I was a musician first, you know, because my, my uncle and my, my uncle's Willie Hutch and my dad's Richard Hutch is writer and is composer. So, um, composers for who? Like, yeah. let it, you can't they, just say that. My dad worked, my dad wrote for the Miracles, the Jacksons, um, the Commodores. And he wrote for Willie Hutch. He helped me write the Mag, Foxy Brown, all that stuff. You know, my uncle's Willie Hutch, which See? he wrote for everybody. He wrote I'll Be There. He wrote, you know, some of the biggest records. You know, he wrote for Fifth Dimensions, all that. You know, so no, you gotta tell the people. Cause yeah, yeah, know, yeah. You so, act like it, it's like no, let them. Yeah, know. yeah. So I'm, I'm from a music. Jacksons, I'm nigga. from a yeah, yeah. I'm from a musical family. I met Michael Jackson when I was like 12 years old. Like he was in 
in the living room talking to us. Like, he didn't try to invite you yeah. to a sleepover, did he? <laughs> no, no, no. At that time, he was Mike. At that time, he was really Mike. At that time, he, I don't know what happened. He had know. the nose. He didn't have yeah. the sharp nose. Yeah, he was big nose. He had the he big nose. He was big nose, nose Mike, so, with the fro. So, yeah. I was off I, the wall, Mike. I, I'm, I'm a Motown, ba- I'm, I'm basically a Motown baby, like a music Motown baby. I, you know, I was birthed into it. Um, about when I was like maybe 15, I mean, well, I met me, me, KMG, and uh, DJ Chaos and Go Mac, we we childhood friends. Uh, we met in high school. We all met in high school, um, and we started above the law. And we started hustling, and this had to be shit. Um, eighty five, eighty six, um, and we was a bunch of D boys hustling. And we took our we took our dope money, and we did a demo called Living Like Hustlers. Uh, we shot to Lay Law at the time. Lay Law, at the time, Lay Law was. Um, with NWA, and um, they were starting to really build the, the roster at Ruthless Records. So Law shot them to tape, and um, um, Easy and Dre dug it, and then that's the birth of Above the Law, basically. You know. What year was um, that? That's 88 when they got the tape. But me, we all met in high school. We all met like 85, 86, you know, as Above the Law. What high um, school was this? Um, Golden went to um, high school in LA, and we went to high school in Pomona. Um, okay. And uh, we should hustle together. Okay. So Golden would come out, a uh, Gold would come out with the LA crew, and then we had the Pomona crew. And we used to be a dope boy clique. Back then they had the dope boy cliques. They had yeah. YD Enterprise, uh-huh. Third World, Freeway Boys. And we was called HBC crew, Hustlers Beyond Control. We some young niggas, wild big ass trucks, acting wild big cars, low riders, all that crazy shit, mm-hmm. dope money, you know. And so we started stacking our dope money. We, we um, created a demo called Living Like Hustlers and shit. Shout out to Law. And um, that was it. That was the I'd beginning. be that than a new Jack Buster? There you go. <laughs> Man, don't do that. Y'all, I'd never rec- y'all had that whole album recorded before you yeah, even we had, got we the had, Yeah, we had, it was um, eight songs already done. And then me and Dre, when me and Dre hooked up, we bumped those eight songs up to a 24. And then me and him did Kicking Lyrics, Freedom of Speech, the last song. Mm, and that made, the and then that made song. the album. That made Living that's Like Hustlers. That's the one with everybody on the motherfucker. Yeah, that's the yeah, one with everybody symphony, on boy. it. Only person who had known it was Cube. Cube had just left. Ah, yep. And Doc just and Doc lost his voice. Just lost his goddamn yeah, voice. Yeah, he lost man. his voice. Yeah. So, Hutch, speaking yeah. of Pomona, are you aware um, <laughs> of this new West, what's called West Rushmore? How Uh-oh. they have the, like, the forefathers of Oh, yeah, West, West, Mount, Mount Westmore. Mount yeah, Westmore. Mount Westmore. My question to you is, mm-hmm. who would be the, f- the, the forefathers <laughs> yeah. of Pomona? Oh, it would yeah. be me, KMG, yeah. Sugar Free, and Cocaine. Okay. That's it. That's a cold thing, Do you guys team, agree man. with that? That's Hell it. Yeah. That's I it. definitely okay. agree with that. Because you get above the law, <laughs> you get above the law, Cocaine, and Sugar Free, and we made that city. That, that's who put it on a global stage. Oh, my map. mama. Mm-hmm. Above that's the law, put it on a, on, a, on a global stage, and they... Carry the torch. Got to do the Pomona Westmore, okay. man. That's Fuck. it. You heard it here first. I like that. I like radio. that. I like. I like the way she thinks. I like the way she thinks. Yeah. <laughs> yo, yo, back, back, back to the, uh, back to the story, man. Uh, okay. Um, you, you mentioned being a creator of G Funk. Yeah. Um, what made you guys do the funky music on Living Like a Hustler? Like, what made that be our lane? Well, well, we, we were originally uh, like we hadn't really broke ground on G Funk because we were kind of doing the the boom and the bat music, because you know, coming out of the 80s, it was more like break beats right. and grooves, you know. But me being a musician, I always wanted to put music on top of everything. You know, some mm. kind of bass line, some, some kind of funky bass line, some like instrumentation right. on top of it. So that started breaking ground. When we, we really started breaking ground on G-Funk was we did a, a 12 inch, I mean not a 12 inch, we did a maxi single called Vocally Pimpin'. Mm. Um, and that started breaking it for the funk of it was on there, a couple other funky songs. And then we started developing like VSOP and that became yeah, the actual uh, G uh, Funk uh, sound. Black that Superman. album. Mm-hmm. Black that, that, Superman. What a Black the, Mafia Life album. Come on, man. Which that, is before that. that. Yeah. Now, so, so when we developed that, when we when we started developing that, and to be honest with y'all, is that we only wanted to do G Funk because we wanted to be a little different than NWA. Yeah. Because when we came out, we didn't want to be looking looked at like a knockoff of NWA. Yeah, yeah. So we kind of got out of the breakbeat stuff and start putting slowing the music down. Because at that time, everything was the high energy. So right. we slowed it down, boom, and put put singing to it. So when you hear our music, it looked like California. Mm. 
like you said, uh, when we in the Bay, we live, it feel like, you know, because we slowed it down for everybody and made it feel like California is slow, it's, it's and fly, too short. it's, and it's too bright. short at that time. That's right, Funky. yeah. So sure, we, so, so we, we followed, funnel. so we kind of followed that, but we did it on the LA flip, you know, to where it was still, because all G-Funk mean is that it's gangster funk. Right. Period. It's, it's, it's funky music with gangster content to it. Mm. And all we was really trying to do, fam, is all we really was trying to do was be different than N.W.A. To cut, yeah. out, cut, out, cut out of that. Not in a bad way to just say, we want a brother law to have their own identity. So me as the producer, I always felt like, okay, what's our sound? So I just kept on chipping away, chipping so, away. So come on, nigga. It's, ah! Slow down, Turbo. Mm -hmm. you was you produce all the shit? Yeah, I produced yeah. everything on Above Law. I'm Above Law's producer. Oh, hell no, nigga. What? Yeah. 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 I'm oh, the producer. Oh, nigga. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down, Turbo. Yeah. Nigga, now that's why you cold. Right. <laughs> 187, bro. You murder it. So yeah. you got 50 on the publishing, yeah. on the producer side, and, and, right. and chopped it up. Oh, nigga, and you was the first smart. kind. And he's smart. He's smart. You was the first kind, yeah. That's good. You, you got it from Dre. You wanted to be the Dre. That's right. You well, they bought me in to be his apprentice. Right. They bought me in to be his understudy. Right. Now, now, and then you replaced uh, Daz, right? Back no, in that's, the, but that's a death row. That's later. But you, you're fast We're going to talk about that, too. Hold on. Stay on this Most people don't know the story, because most of credit for G-Funk goes to Warren G. Yeah, and the most fans of people. And, 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 no, and, no, and that, back story. I'm glad you alley you that. You Speak did. on the Warren G and y'all discovering them. Okay. The, 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 story, the story with Warren G is this. Okay. When we was working, we were working on Living Like Hustlers album, right? And, and Dre didn't want Warren to come stay with him because him and Michelle Leia just got a crib together, right? And he was like, oh, man, you know, I'm trying to make this relationship thing happen or whatever, right? He said, hey, Hutch, man, won't you let him come stay with you? I said, okay, you know, Warren used to hang out. He was a studio rat at the time. So it was like, okay, he always with us. He always with us, eating, rolling around, partying with us and everything. Come on home with us. So we took him out to the house. As we was developing Living Like Hustlers vocally, as we doing those records, he was a part of our G-Funk family, okay, okay. basically. Now, when Snoop gets out of YA, he brings Snoop around. Then we start lacing, lacing shit up with Snoop and, 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 and Nate Dog and rest Snoop in peace. Snoop right? Exactly. So, th and that's when they were trying to develop 213, so but it just hadn't developed yet. His name was Snoop Rock? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Huh? And when he was young. Snoop Dogg yeah. name was Snoop Rock. Yeah, back when then. he was young, yeah. yeah. But when, but when he, but, like but when, they, when we started trying to develop him, he became Snoop Dogg. You know what I mean? When did he change his name? It was like around the same time, like a simultaneous thing. But okay. when they when they were developing two one three, because really he was he, he was trying to they were trying to do two one three, but Warren was really pushing Snoop. Right. So we was like, okay. So Snoop come through. He freestyle. We love him. We trying to develop him. Okay. But at the same time, our clicks was breaking apart. So Ruthless was dismantling. Right. Mm. So when the clicks broke up, <coughs> Dre went this way. We stayed. Warren <laughs> and Snoop wanted to go with Dre. We couldn't contractually go with them to Death Row to, to make Death Row happen. So right. what happened was Dre came through and he was like, hey, I want to sign that kid Snoop that you got. What you think I should do? And I was like, shit, dude got that shit. He, he shit, he, he, out the, he out the building. Boom, 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 boom. That was it. <laughs> one day seven on the motherfucking That was it. Car. And see, one day seven, I was supposed to do that hook. That's me. They imitate me. Yeah. Cause it's one eight seven on the undercover cop. That's he just emulate me. So all that's when we were together, you know, because me and Cocaine got a record on Deep Cover soundtrack. Mm. We always all were together. The so, crazy, the, the crazy part about the crazy part about what Warren G was is, Warren G will tell you that he got G funk from us. It was above the law sound. Right. He just integrated it in him, just like the Chronic. The Chronic is uh, is influenced by me as a producer. When he was when we was working on he was working on niggas for life. I was working on Black Mafia Life, which is the blueprint to G funk. Well, when he left, he heard all the shit I was doing. He like. I want to use a little bit of this and use the, it was like sprinkles of what I was doing, Dre, because me and Dre worked together all the time yeah, yeah. at that time. 
Every day we in the studio so together. That split was crazy. You know, you I was the little mini Dre because I was a young dude learning how to make records. But I always could play. I played three different instruments. I always could program. All that shit. I put the drums oh, on 100 miles shit. and running. They were my drums. <coughs> I wrote 100 miles and running with them. <coughs> Hold on. 100 miles and running. You co-produced. Absolutely. And I co-wrote it. Damn. Fact. I, you, I produce Easy E. I produce. I, dog, there's so many people I produce. Legendary it's ridiculous. shit on Smoke a Lot of Radio. I produce all of. I produce all of Cocaine's early stuff. Mm. Everything. That's that zigzag album. That album with the there you go. The zigzag. Yep. The rapper on the front. I produce every record on the Black slow Superman burning. album. Slow Every record. That slow burn. Every, every record, record on Black Mafia Life. Every record. Even the record that you came in and did with KMG called Soul Searching. I produced that whole album. <laughs> Come on, bro. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Dr. Dre has something to do. No, nah, only thing. Uh, Dre. With that album. Dre taught me how to make records. That's what I taught. When I bought my demo in, which was I had eight songs already produced. He helped me bump them up to a 24 track. And then, he, and then me and him together produced three more records on Living Like Hustlers. And, and then from there, choice. I was off and running. He was like, you don't need me. He was like, man, come on. So you was the first dance. Yeah, if you want to say that. Because we didn't have, see, at Ruthless, we didn't have no house producers. Dre was the house, the, the producer. house producer right. until I came. So yeah, did Yella ever do beats? Yella, but he, but they were a team. Remember, him and Dre right. was a team. Okay, they did beats. But together. they, they were, they were the house producers. There right. was no, they were like, they were like the Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Right. All the beats together. is these. Right. Right. No it's sending like, no beats uh, in like, from uh, everywhere fucking, else. Uh, uh, but Dre uh, did. Uh, but Dre uh, didn't know one could do it better by himself. Uh, him okay. and Yella did all the NWA and Easy E stuff together. Right. But he didn't know one could do it better by himself. Me and Dre did living like. Like hustlers. So he did the whole DMC, DMC shit by himself. By himself. By himself. So yeah. I watched him do Lord. that. Ooh. I watched him do that. <laughs> Lord. Him and Law did Miss LA. Um, um, me, him, and Law was behind the above the law stuff. You know what I mean? Law was the executive. Me and Dre was the, the sound. But Dre only helped me produce three records from the bottom up. He pr helped me produce. Um, me and Law wrote a record called Freedom of Speech. He produced that from the ground up. Um, I produced a re I, I co-produced with him on a record called Kicking Lyrics, if y'all remember that. Yep. And um, the last song. The last song. Everything else was on the demo. All you. Living like wow. a hustle was on the demo. Murder rap was on the demo. Um, he uh, came uh, ready. Minister Society, um, Ballin, Flow On, all that's on the demo. Now the stuff y'all love, where you from, I produced that by myself. I'm gonna tell you where you got the living like a hustler uh, sample from. Hickey Burr, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bill Cosby, Yeah. The Bill Cosby show. Yo, yeah. so That's crazy. when me and Noah was little, we was like listening to all the goddamn albums to find these samples, because you yeah. had to find the exactly. samples. Exactly, And it was, what was the niggas called? Man, there was some other niggas called. They, oh, man, I can't remember their name. There's some A band or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. But you, you got a lot of that on your shit too. PT Express. PT Express. Yeah. Them niggas. Minister Society. PT Express. Mm -hmm. You got them niggas yep. on there. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. So, yep. yeah, we used to like search Iron for the side, samples. Ironside, all them TV tunes. Remember, we should sample them TV, TV tunes. TV tunes. Back then. So, Real that's records. how me and them came mm -hmm. with the Club Nouveau shit. Because oh, we used yeah. to get the vinyls. Got you. Know you. What I mean? So, we went and got that vinyl mm -hmm. and bought it to the producer. Yeah. He didn't have that beat playing. Yeah. We bought the vinyl to that nigga and right. said, we do this. Right. You know what I mean? Because it was about getting the vinyls and finding the break beats or whatever back in right. the day. Like steal from Juice, stealing and, and, and records and the crazy, from yeah, and the All that shit. Me and them was Juice like a motherfucker, for real. And the trip about, and, and you know, the first person who coined G-Funk on a record was Pac. On, on a record called Call It What You Call Want. Call It What You Want. No, yeah. for real? Yeah, me, it's me, him, me, rest in peace, my brother KMG, too. You can call yeah. it what you want. Yeah. I, I, um, we were waiting for Shock, Shock G, rest in peace. That's we was waiting for Shock to come to the studio, and Pocket came with Mun. At the time, Pocket didn't even have a record. He just was on um, same, same song. song. Same song. You have a record yet? And we liked this flow on that record, and he was like, "Hey, you want to let dude get on? Cause we we was, you know how back then, nigga, studio was cost mm, right, a lot yeah. of money. So we was like, okay, give him a shot. We like dude, dude, pretty hot, killed it. And he put that coin on. Um, he said, what y'all call your music? We call it G-Funk. I'm pumping G-Funk, but you can call it what you want. 
right. he killed that shit. He the right. first one who coined the, that the is G phone that he rapping to. Wow. I don't think nobody besides nobody has ever coined the word G funk on a record. They just kind of start labeling that's what we do. But Pac is the mm -hmm. one who. Said it, know, on song, said it on a song. Historic shit on yeah. Smoke Lot Radio. You made it a hot sound. I made it a hot song. You made it a hot <laughs> sound. I made it a hot. <laughs> so yeah, so when you so when you think about it, I think that we were we were just trying to as writers and and and, and producers, we were just trying to do something different with G Funk. And then when Warren did it, Warren and I guess the Chronic and Warren's record took it to a commercial level, which was which was great for us because we were an underground hardcore group. You know, above the laws, all hardcore shit. We wasn't, we wasn't on the radio. So for us to have our sound, that's kind of like paying homage. That's kind of like a, what they say, a um, form of flattery. When Imitation people is stuff. the best form of flattery. Exactly. So I love it. Man, but Dre took your shit, man. <laughs> I won't say he took it because, see, people, people say that he, people will say that just to agitate it. But Don't he disrespect to Dre. He didn't come, that's my brother. I'll still work with Dre to this day. He didn't come in the studio and take no masters. He didn't come in the studio. He just said, my little homie got some hot shit, and I'm influenced by it. So I'm going to try it I on mean, my shit. I mean, y'all did work together on hits. So y'all yeah. have the same but sound. How did the whole living like a hustling but above the law sound become the sound for the chronic and the sound for well, that what Black Mafia the sound did. For the well, Black Mafia Life album did. Because when we was working on, when they were working on Niggas for Life and they was and we were working on Black Mafia Life, what happened was when when they broke up, when Dre left the label, all the deals went away. Mm. So I we were at Sony, but our deal was based upon Dre being involved in it. Mm. So when Dre left, Sony Balled the deal up and threw it in the trash. Mm. So it took like six to eight months for us to get placed again. Now, the chronic came out. Black Mafia life is shelved. Mm. Yeah. So now the chronic comes out and it's highly influenced by Black Mafia life. You get it? But the Black Mafia life is not out, right? It's not out yet. But then when it come out, it's like we chased the it's chronic. Like you chased chased it. So it fell chronic. into uh, it fell into the loop of Dre yeah. did this incredible new sound and everybody's yeah. following that. Yeah, really, right. he got it. He was influenced by our album, Black Mafia Life. Which had Black Superman on no, it. No, that's the record that had VSOP on it. VSOP, VSOP call, right. it, call it what you want with Pac. Uh, never missing a beat. It got all that funky parliament type of shit. Crazy. If you listen to Black Mafia Life and the Chronic, you will know Chronic is the commercial version of G-Funk. And that's your mama's fried chicken. That's mama's cooking. <laughs> mama's well, shouts cooking. out to Kwame Brown. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, shouts out to Kwame. That's Make mama's sure, cooking. So that's how he did his credit. Yo. He ain't about to cuss yeah. me So that's out. how that happened, you know. Hey, man. It's a little history lesson. But, but yeah, but you heard it here first made, on Smoking Lot Radio. Y'all made a legendary mm -hmm. sound no matter how it, it was, you know what I mean, put out there, man. Y'all made a legendary sound that woke up the whole hip-hop game. There was, you go. Like, everybody I take it. was jealous of Dre. I take you it. You know what I mean? Everybody jealous of the West Coast and L.A. Mm -hmm. when that sound came. Yeah. You know what I mean? Y'all had, had the ball. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like how Atlanta got the ball and down south got the ball right now. Mm -hmm. To where everybody got to try to sound like them. Y'all made everybody want to try yeah. to do G phone. There you go. <laughs> at Absolutely. that time, you know. And I'm I mean? proud of so. that, homie. I, I'm proud. Of, I'm proud of the fact that the Chronic did that. You right. know, I'm glad the fuck. I'm, I'm. I'm proud that Warren's record did that for us for the sound. Because when you a producer, when I learned when you a producer, the most profound thing you can do here is leave a sound or have a sound or be a part of a distinctive sound. And see, in hip hop. Hip hop has many, you know, if you put a string on top of it and you rap, it's hip hop. Yeah. If you put a banjo on top of it and rap, it's hip hop. So it's some, one of the free forming, forming types of music that you can't say, I can put it in a box. So for us to be able to be known to have a sub genre in hip hop is incredible, you know, in which we didn't even think it would be a sub genre created. It's just a sound that I was trying to do to be different. How right. hard was it for you to pick sides when all that shit happened? Man? Oh, it was, it was hard. Like you kept cool with everybody. It was all, hard. It was hard because you're talking about level. friends. Yeah, yeah. See, one thing, one, one thing you got to realize, we were friends first. You know, and then coming up and money starts corrupting everybody. You know, so for us, like when it's like, okay, we cool with Dre and Suge and Doc and Michelle A. They leave. 
we want to leave with them because it's only just us, Easy, and Yella at that time. Mm. So we like everybody left, and then and then the, the the drama with the Jerry Heller situation and all that. Cube had left, you know what I mean. So every so the whole family was breaking up basically. Only people stayed was me, um, uh, the rest of above the law, Ren, and Yella. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then it's easy. So for us, we didn't want to not be cool with 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 Dre. We didn't want to not be cool with Suge. We didn't want to not be cool with Doc, you know, or Michelle. We came up with them, you know. So. Yeah, it was hard, man. And, and we spent most of our life, like our company, we spent most of our time. Everybody was involved basically in everyone's record. Okay, so. You know? So, so it wasn't like if, we, if you was in there making a record, we come into the studio to root you on. Mm -hmm. It was like that. So yeah. when that breakup came, it was devastating because it was like now everybody is working all over the place and not really talking to each other. You know what I mean? So yeah, it was very hard, man. Like, like it, it, we, we base it on, we grew together. We, you know, we grew together in the game because there was a time where it was nothing. Then it was everything to where we on Arsenio, we on here, we touring, we, you know, all of that stuff, you know? So, so like how that movie went down straight out of Compton, were you involved in any of those altercations or were that fabricated stories on that movie? Well, the altercations, wasn't fabricated, um, but I think the fact that they try to make, I, I really don't like the way Hollywood try to make, portray Easy e Like he, right. That weed shit was bullshit. That's huh? bullshit. Yeah, I knew that was Him being beat up by Suge, that's bullshit. All that's for Hollywood. Now, that they beef, happened. You heard it now, they beef, now they beef with no hands on. It was some threats, it was some, thre it was some threats blow, yeah. some threats back and forth, but no hands was thrown. But I get Hollywood, I understand. But I think it's necessary for people to even have a person like Easy e in name, name in their mouth because he's the reason why any of us exist. Exactly. Any of us have platforms, you know, me and my crew, uh, you know, you look at a Dre, you look at a Cube, you look at all these people, there is no without the single move of him taking his dope money and creating Ruthless Records. So that's why I think Straight Outta Compton was necessary. You know, for people to know he's not just a rapper who died from AIDS. And, and the brilliance of Eazy E was this. Eazy E was sharp enough to say, I'm not the most talented dude in the room. Y'all are. So let me give y'all the let me give y'all the reins and let y'all do his his biggest failure was having faith in in an executive when he didn't know what was up and not sticking with his homies. Mm. Not rolling with the homies that he came up with. You know, mm. that was his biggest mistake. And me and him, we, we had a lot of battles over that part of it. A lot of people because he always felt like he, he should have like made that. the right decision by, he should have backed the homies. When stuff wasn't fair for Cube, he's like, I should have backed Cube. Nobody when stuff wasn't right for Drake, that. I should have backed, yeah. He's told me this stuff. Mm -hmm. Because at the end, because at the end, what he realized is that we not nothing without us, all of us together. Yeah. It's cool, Def Row over there, Ruthless is over there, we cool, but we wasn't accustomed to that. You know, that's not really, that's not really that what we stood any, on. That and see, Suge, the, the crazy thing about Suge in the early days, Suge was the one who actually exposed everything. He was the one who said, okay, we eat now, it's not fair, we need to check this motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Now his tack might have been fucked off, but he was the first one to actually step up and actually see what was going on as far as the truth in the matter of that shit. You know? So it was before Cube. Suge was the first well, one. Well, no, if Cube said it, but then when Suge really started really seeing what was going on, he started saying, like, man, you know, maybe homie was right. Because he managing, started seeing it. Because Suge was managing DOC at right, the time. Right, because he started yeah. seeing it more and more. The same shit was repeating itself. Like, he's like, okay, it ain't fair. You know, and back then, see what people got to realize that a good deal was getting a deal, okay? <laughs> right. Oh, my mama. Flat out. That was a good oh, deal. Oh, my mama. That was getting a deal was getting deal, a good deal was getting. Nigga. You know, because hip hop hadn't got his legs industry like that. Why? Why? Right. New York or L.A. It didn't have its legs yet. You know what I mean? So just getting a deal for rapping. You won. You won. You won. You no won, matter what nigga. was on that motherfucker. We don't know what the Because I might have been in your house with a pistol. Right. I might I might have been him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, I wasn't. So, right. so to get a so, deal, being him, you won, my nigga. There you go. Period. So, 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 no matter what the paperwork. No, but Suge no. started noticing that, okay, we making it now. It's not fair. Well, you renegotiate. 
That he, didn't, he didn't let you renegotiate? It, because he still felt like it was fair. You but see what I'm saying? On, my nigga, when you start off like record labels, they give you probably a 10 point deal at the beginning. Yeah. You go platinum, they probably raise that shit up they to might 14, bump it. 15. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But they don't do that until you prove yourself. There you go. So boom, once you prove yourself, you can renegotiate your so Shug, deal. So Suge's point of view was after we had already been established in selling records. So y'all should have been able to renegotiate. There you go. Got more points, more money. Yeah, but money. still it was like, like fuck that. not you right now. This. this is what we oh, Not whoa. this. Da, da, da. And, that, and that's when the breakup came. Ten album no, deal, yo. No, nigga, y'all, we proved ourselves. And that's when the breakup came. Yeah, that with any See, regular. See, really, really for real, I got respect for Shug. I mean, I got respect for for um for, sure. for Cube. I got respect for Cube because sure. Cube because at the at the end of the day, he was the first person that saw like the only way I'm actually gonna actually get something is to break away from y'all. Exactly. Yeah, sometimes you gotta separate the. LA. That's right. But we didn't element. see it because it was new. He did it when we get off the of straight out of Compton. When when they get off the straight out of Compton tour, that's when he starts set tripping. <laughs> oh, fucking he dumb. said they was eating steak deals, steak and had to get the fat burger, man. He had my nigga right. on fat but, burger, But man. the point was, but the point was at the at the end of the Last day, he burger. saw he saw that. Hey, look, the way this shit look like where it's going is not going to be good. Now, mind you, it did get a little more gravy. It got a little gravy. But not like, and that's when Suge stepped in and was like, hey man, this ain't right. <coughs> hey man, that ain't right. It's like saying, here go a million dollars, but a motherfucker owe you five. If you see four million missing, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. So it was like that kind of ideal, you know. <clears throat> Damn, imagine. Cherry Heller was getting to the end. This is a wishful thought. Imagine. Mm -hmm. If y'all niggas would have all kept it to. It'd be crazy. Her. It'd have been crazy. Under the same umbrella, It'd have been crazy. my It'd nigga, if Q would have had his It'd shit been up crazy. under the umbrella. It'd have been crazy. If fucking Dre well, would look have at the game Dre, now. it would, nigga, the game would be Look at the game wrong. now. So, Because so, look at it. If you look but at it. But you all look split at, up and still right. killed the game. But that's right. Imagine so as think, one yeah. power, as that, one Voltron. And like, that's the point. And, and, and that's the point. The that would have yeah. fucked the world over. that's the point. Like Motown, because, nigga, that would have been some very good. All because that the brilliance, shit. because the brilliance, if you look at all the all the clicks, they're all the same minds mm -hmm. from that one place. From that one place, they're still the same mind. It's still That's the why same. You stay down blueprint. shitty same with your day still one. The same mind. The same blueprint. Yeah. Right. Stay down shitty with your day it's one. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Easy. Yeah. Jerry. Right. Same blueprint. It's still the same minds. Spread it out. Q, Dre, yeah. Easy. Yeah, it's still the same mind. Same shit. It out. Easy. Man, with Nobody that. was taking no L's. Separately. So think what? about what it would have been together. Together! Boy, the black <laughs> octopus. Nobody was taking no L's. We brought... Niggas think think about it. Everything. Think about it when, when, when it came to when we blew up with Black Superman. Bone came out. Snoop came out. All that shit was Dog under one L... Under Dog one cam, Lady of Rage, corrupt. <laughs> Think about that over there. Nigga, uh, RBX. Think about that under one oh, umbrella. Under one umbrella, nigga. Daddy boy. Don't oh, fuck with nigga. Don't say Daddy boy ever again, nigga. <laughs> yeah, Daddy boy. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. It'll be. It'll be. It would have been a fucking nuclear bomb in here. That's right. Y'all, y'all individual movements was nuclear fucking bombs. Right. Imagine. All that's that cube lynch my all that lynch my shit. Oh my all that yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Ah. Under one umbrella, yeah. Niggas be oh, yeah. fumbling the ball, man. Oh yeah. Oh, the, yeah. Not the disrespect, but the German man, the Jewish man, and all the mother men from other lands. That money they is come together and they up under the same fucking they umbrella. Yeah. And that's why you got these fucking universals and these motherfucking uh all the Atlantics and shit, because they all under one motherfucking umbrella. Once mm -hmm. we figure that out, we can have our own shit. And I think what and, people what people don't right? understand about Easy E, Easy E would have pulled it back together. Because one thing about Eric, Eric wasn't, uh, he wasn't confrontational. Right. He just stood on man shit. He was like a man. Right. He was like, if he was wrong, and you called him on some wrong shit, he'd be like, okay, no, I'm wrong. What, he stood on that man shit. And he, was, he already had made a miss with, with um, Cube. He already made a miss with Dre. He was going to pull it all back together, even if the, it had to be death row ruthless together. They already was talking like that already. No, I'm going to give you one, one before we wrap this shit up. Um, mm -hmm. 
they will come after your ass when you do it. Absolutely. Because uh, Jay Prince, Absolutely. Suge Knight, Shug, was gonna do and it. Er yeah. was, was trying to do it, trying mm -hmm. to bring the East, the down South, and the West together to build that conglomerate, mm -hmm. that umbrella that we talked right. about. It was one. It was one time where yeah. it was it was Jay Prince. Shug and, and, er and Eric at one time because oh, they were tight. Yeah, in the early oh, days, yeah, they was already trying to talk about shit like that already. Yeah, because you got to look at rap a lot. If you looked at rap a lot and ruthless, that's the South, ruthless. Right. That's it. So they was gonna Absolutely. come together. Right. So it, it, you know, I, I think that if that would have happened, somebody would have got murdered. No, in that jail. Like, in that I era. Somebody would have gotten murdered. My thing is money, money, the money in hip hop back then. Yeah. Somebody would have got murdered. Yeah, yeah. Big them, money back you then. talking about those three conglomerates? I mean, though, if you just talking about Death Row and that and Murder Inc. coming together, man, somebody was going, so they would kill, they would have bumped somebody off. That yeah. hit the motherfucking labels. Yeah, they would have bumped somebody off. I was driving out Wilshire when they hit Death Row. Exactly. Bust down all the windows, mm -hmm. all the shit. Bust down. I'm at rap a lot. <laughs> mm hmm. Signed at this time. Yeah. They running through the whole mm -hmm. like Urban them getting ran through. So sure is. Kicked it, out of the motherfucking Def Jam building. That's right. That's mm -hmm. a power move that they don't want to see. They will nah. get them people mm -mm. involved. They will. To make that shit stop. Oh yeah. Because oh, yeah. you're gonna stop their umbrella. The umbrella that I was talking about. And think about the people that you're talking about. And think about the people they're talking about. They had Urban Radio on lock. All them labels. Right. Every label you talking about had Urban Radio on lock. You know? So if they came together and did it, oh, you know what it would have did? It would have made the East Coast come together. Mm -hmm. It'd have made all the black companies out there do it. Mm -hmm. It, you know what I'm saying? That was the East, the West, and the South all on the all world united. Province. Yeah, the Midwest would have been next. The top dude, and then you know Jay Prince tapped in with all the shot town stuff, so mm -hmm. it would have been one ultimate. And I think record. that we come from a time where. Everybody got in the car together for hip hop. Back everybody got yeah, in the car everybody. together. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, everybody got in the car together for hip hop. I, I'm from that era. Yeah. I'm from that era where we all tour together. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You're gonna see. You're gonna see a brother law, De La Soul, Buster, leaders. You're gonna see all of the poor rights. You're gonna see us all on the same yeah. stage. Sure. I've everybody. toured with Two Shark in everybody. in Master Ace. I've I've toured Twist with the, I, I've toured with Big shit. Daddy, the Two Live Crew. You know what I'm saying? So. I'm from that era that everybody had to get in the car together to actually even for, exist. For the culture. So I know that that would have been, some people would have got killed. I'm just telling you. Damn. That's too much money. Too much we money. Have, we already had power. We already had power dealing with them. They couldn't do nothing with us being in, in cahoots with them. If we'd have unplugged from them, they'd have killed somebody. Now that we're on this conspiracy <laughs> shit, man, one more before we go, man, before you let us, you know what I mean, give us all the new shit that you got going, because you being a, I just now found out you was a producer, nigga. I've been knowing you for the longest, nigga. Right. I never knew you produced all that heat, my nigga. Yeah, that's crazy. But on the, on the um, conspiracy type of level, man, Easy e man, mm -hmm. um, they saying that he died from AIDS and all that. Yeah. Um, do you think it was foul play or he really died from AIDS? Well, I... It, it one it happened too quick for me, which makes me, which gives me the perspective to think like uh, it's conspiracy. Foul play, yeah, foul a play. lot of foul play. You know, um, nobody I've never, died from AIDS that quick. I've My never dad seen had AIDS. it. I've never seen it. And My Easy had, had the AIDS. type of money. Easy had Magic Johnson money back then. Right. And you got all the money to afford. He had Magic Johnson to be alive. Money. He had Magic. Yeah, Magic Johnson. had it so Magic long. Seemed like it helped him. Yeah. Magic's still here. Uh, Magic is still here. And Magic was diagnosed stronger. before Eric. Magic was diagnosed before Eric. So. Oh yeah. Let's just keep it one hundred. You're right. Years before Eric. You're right. So. Yeah, I I I definitely think that that's foul play. You know, I do. I, to to some degree, I think that I think that whatever went down, that something they allowed to happen to kill him off, you know? Damn. I, I think so. I, I think when you authorize an operation and you know a person is diagnosed with something, you cut on him, how can he be treated? He don't have an immune system to fight it off. You cutting the man open. That right there is already foul play. Yeah. Right. Who authorized the operation knowing that he can't even fight off? The operation. He can't even, yeah, he, he, he could die, he could live, he could die. Oh, so you decide to, decide to kill him, basically. You know, so. No, it don't, it don't happen that quick. He yeah. had, it happened within weeks. Yeah, because he died of complications of it. Like, after oh. he got... Sliced up. Yeah. Oh, they God. were trying to draw 
um, the, he had pneumonia. They were trying to draw the stuff off his lungs, and they went in, in it, and he couldn't fight it off because his immune system wasn't strong enough. So there you have it. Rest in peace. Wow. God, and they could have saved him like they did magic, man. I think so. Changed my life. Easy was too Big powerful, man. They, they invited him to the White House. That's a powerful black That's man. That's right. Yeah. And, and that's and, what they were scared of. And he was proud of that. That's he said, because he man. said, hey, I spent $10,000 and got a million dollars worth of press. He said, I was so close to the president, I could have shot his eye out with a motherfucking paper clip. <laughs> <laughs> Straight low in the I White House. I was on house. the ground. He said, motherfucker want to talk that shit? I did something brilliant. What Compton nigga you know was in the White House? With his yeah, I ain't never and seen him. But it, maybe Kendrick Lamar went to Obama was in there, right? You ain't seen no nigga yeah, like he Ronald, Ronald Reagan. Yeah. Ronald Reagan. The king of gangsters. Yeah. Bush, wasn't he? Bush or one of yeah, Bush. Bush. Big Bush. Hold yeah. on, man. I no disrespect, but we ain't see Russell Simmons. Like, you got Easy e there? Yeah. The White House, we didn't see Russ. Russell so he was at yoga big. class. So you see, so you see how huge, that shit so you see how, so you see how large Easy e was. Right. See? Why not Russ? When you brought up the status of like a puffy dick, he's at the White House, see? Before yeah. anybody could go in there. Before any rapper. The first mm -hmm. ever. And think, Executive. And think a few years before that, the FBI was on their bumper for fuck the police. So Yeah, Ray that's Show. Crazy. That's mm -hmm. the nigga that show. That's right. Shit. Yeah. At, at, no, at tours. Not on show, tours. tours. Telling, telling motherfuckers you can't sing the song every night. So... On that note, man, we're going to wrap this shit up, man. Give them all the social media handles. Let them know what you got coming okay. next. Okay, you know what I got coming um, next is um, I got, um, well, it's, it's not next, next. You know, I got an album coming out on Halloween called um, The Resurrection of Gangster Rap Above the Law Presents, Code 187, Mansa Musa. Um, right, I've been seeing that promo. I thought yeah. it was out. The yeah, it comes out on, yeah, it comes out on Halloween. It's The oh, Resurrection yeah. of Gangster Rap. You Let's know. go, nigga. Um, and then I, I just finished... Um, Working on Cocaine's album, Five on the Black Hand Side. We're just dropping a single on him mm -hmm. um, called Paint Where It Ain't. And um, I got, I'm doing my TV show right now, The Black Godfather. Um, it'll be out on my own streaming network, Moosa TV. That, that's going to start in um, September, the first season. Um, also got Rock Boy Honeys, my media company, my modeling network, you know. Um, and I got Mansa Moosa Clothing. So, um, Mansa Musa clothing. And, with you, man. Yeah, Mansa Musa clothing, and I got Hutchie Boy clothing, Hutchie Bear clothing for females. So, um, and you can re you can get all that MansaMusaRoyalty.com. You want to check out the gear, um, HutchieBearClothing.com. If you want, if the ladies want some some gear, um, my social media is Mansa Musa Royal on IG or um, 187 Rock Boy Honeys um, on IG and. Um, Code 187 um, on Twitter. And that's it. That's all I got. Hey, man. That's what's it's up. been an Hi. honor, a pleasure to get that goddamn history, that that real cloth talk from the legend. That is. You know Thanks what I mean? Thanks for having me, y'all. Yo, Cold 187, man. AKA Big Hutch, man. Um, <laughs> rest in peace, Cam G. Man. That's right, man. All the time, man. My you brother, man. Mean? Super oh. shout out to Go Mac. Go Mac, you know what, what I'm up? saying? My nigga DJ Chaos, Lay Law with the clout. And cocaine yeah. law. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that you know? I mean. We out this motherfucker, man. It's your boy Yuck Mouth, the host with the most colado smoke with the beautiful. Simone Taylor in the building. With the endless nigga Nebraska, B. California, oh my mama. Give me the vitamins, son. You catch on do the soul box, catch on Pop TV, get the app, watch the motherfucker behind the scenes streaming. What you gonna do with smoke a lot of radio blows this colado smoke on you? Bye bye. Ah, we out this motherfucker. <laughs> Yada da! Oh my